disappointed fangirls, OnePlus has decided to come out and release their own images of their own phone, the OnePlus 9 Pro. And my reaction is, eh? I mean, whatever. Also on today's episode, the Google Pixel Fold, a phone that I have not talked about. A lot of people have been talking about it, so I'm gonna see what all the hype is about. And lastly, if you're an iPhone 11 user, you're probably gonna wanna watch this next story in regards to the phone, because it may have something to do with a discoloring issue, so you're not gonna wanna miss that. All done on today's episode, so stay tuned. YouTube, what's poppin'? Michael here, welcome back to Technoid. I hope you're doing well, I hope you're all staying safe. Anyway guys, today's episode is going to be three stories and three stories only. We're gonna get straight to it, but real quick, real disclaimer guys, uh, my last video, the OnePlus video, was done using Final Cut Pro. I just wanted to put it out there. So if you guys enjoy the improvements on the last video, let me know in the comment section below on today's episode, and let me know what I can do to improve it in the near future. All that out of the way, let's get it going. So story number one, the main story, the OnePlus 9 Pro. Now, I've been talking about this phone, I've talked about the renders, the leaks, the images, the concept images. I have talked about it and I am trying to hype myself up. I have been trying to find a reason to hype OnePlus, especially with the OnePlus watch, which I think so far has shown some pretty good promise, but OnePlus has once again done the same thing they did last year with the Nord phone as they have come out, or at least the CEO has come out, and basically just leaked the phone once again. This time around, instead of me being angry and upset, my reaction this time around is more... I mean, we kind of knew this was it. That's my reaction. We already knew what it was going to look like. We knew what it was going to be. You can market it any way you want. You can say, oh, it's 60% this, 30% this. It's, it's got a misty flavor. Guys, it doesn't matter. We've known what these phones were going to look like from the start. They were leaked way ahead. They were leaked everywhere. And this is a reason why I have no hype, not just for OnePlus, but for no Android event. I am not hyped anymore. Honestly, and I, I never thought I would be saying this, but I am more hyped for Soundcore, Apple, and other companies than Android manufacturers because First of all, this has been a problem and the tech world doesn't care. You see, this is why I have to call out a lot of people. Us fans and the leakers. The leakers, you guys are deliberately doing this not only to get some clout, but you're literally doing it because you know you shouldn't be doing it, but you want to do it anyway. So, if nobody's going to stop you, why do it? Well, you could be a nice guy and say so, but again, of course, clout chasing is fine. But that's one. And two, us fans, us fans of these Android manufacturers, I know you guys don't think this way, which is fine, but you have to understand, when you support the leaks, when you support, now I admit, I have done my share in the past, but the only reason I do that is because I have a show to run. But if I'm being a fan, I would try to steer clear of these leaks, but it's nearly impossible. And I think we have to take some accountability and say, you know, we're part of the problem because we keep spreading these rumors, we keep sharing them, we keep doing this. And in OnePlus's case, this happened a year ago. And correct me if I'm wrong, the former CEO did this crap and then went, boom, I'm out the door. Now we got the new CEO in and your first move is like, oh yeah, we're, we're gonna do the same thing. Like, come on, this is a reason why everybody is bored of these events. And it's not one plus, it's all of tech in the whole field. But if you really anticipate us wanting to care about this phone, you should at least have the ball, the dignity to keep your phone under wrap. At least do something where it's black and white or something where it teases a design like the OnePlus watch did on your post. Or better yet, don't leak the thing all together. I don't understand why companies, for some reason, have to leak their products. We, you know people are leaking them, why don't you have better security? Or better yet, why don't you take action when your devices get leaked? Instead of letting these guys get away with it, why don't you do something about it? But of course you won't. So what do you do? We gotta join the pile and say, yeah, we did it ourselves too, because we wanna get in there, don't we? Well, this is the reason why you see the reaction from the fans every time there's a Twitter post about OnePlus phones. Here is a genuine reaction. It is boredom. People are bored of your phones, OnePlus, so at least you could do is build some anticipation, have some kind of thing going. And I'm not trying to bash OnePlus, but this is the reason why tech events are phasing out. 
there are no care for the products, there is no genuine hype anymore, and as long as people keep condoning these leaks and reports, nothing is ever going to change. So if they don't change, why should I change, and why should anybody change? Well, someday somebody should, but at the end of the day, it stinks. Because I was really trying to get hyped for this phone, I was following the leaks, I was following everything, and now I see OnePlus do this, I'm like, okay, we already know where this is going. So, yeah, that's the OnePlus 9 Pro. Again, good phone, good look, just move on. Alrighty, story number two, let's talk about the Google Pixel phone. Now, this is a phone that I actually know nothing about, and I'm actually kind of curious about. This is actually something very worth interesting, unless, of course, they're gonna leak that two days later. But according to a lot of renders, people are saying that Google is working, apparently, from a rumor mill, they're hearing that a Pixel Fold is in the works. Now, I haven't really been paying attention, but according to the leaks, it says here, that a lot of the claims that Google is entering the foldable smart range says that they are going to be adopting LG or Samsung's format of a dual screen fold. Now that's something that we could have obviously projected, but taking a look further at the rumors, they're projecting this to come out in the end of 2021 into 2022 as a concept reveal. Some people have suggested that the fold would be expected around early 2022, which is something I would believe along the lines. I don't think we're gonna see at the end of 2021. But taking a look closely, a lot of people are saying that this design could be around the $1,199 mark to $1,399, which is pretty considerate considering it's a foldable. But taking a look also at the design, a lot of people are saying, according to a patent, that it will have a quote-unquote revolutionary design. Again, there's so much revolutionary crap wording goes out there, I don't know what else to say. But overall, this Pixel Fold is supposed to be an OLED display and Google will have a purportedly struck a deal with Samsung to get OLED panels, so they may have been working on something in the background. So all this put into perspective, this builds us a foldable that honestly might dominate. Now Samsung has done a pretty good job, I would say they've done a good job of really introducing the foldables onto the market. But now that you've got Google on board, and then soon, of course, LG has their variant, then Microsoft, now you're starting to expand the idea of a two-in-one tablet phone, and I really like the direction, and I'm glad that Google, even though they're not the best with flagships, I wanna see what they do with a foldable. I really do think they have potential to make it work, especially with their software, you know, they're the OEM. So I would not write this off. Honestly, keep your eye on the Pixel Fold. This looks very, very interesting. And last story, let's talk about the iPhone 11 and 12 models. Now, as you know, a lot of people have been using these phones as they are probably one of the best selling smartphones out there on the market. But according to a couple of users, there are a lot of people reporting a coloring dis Colorment. So if you are an iPhone 11 or 12 user, you're gonna to wanna to hear this quickly. Basically, there have been reports that the aluminum chassis, that a lot of people are saying that the product red iPhone 12 has leached in color, that some other reports have been coming from the iPhone 11 and iPhone SE 2, that there is a dramatic loss of color on the edges. The iPhone models have a transparent case, which kind of shows that off more in detail of the discoloring. But most of all, you could see the sheer difference in the image. And if you're an iPhone 11, 12 user, you're definitely gonna wanna report this to Apple because honestly, Apple thinks it's your fault. It's probably their fault, but who knows? It probably is your fault. But still, report it into Apple because who knows? They'll have some kind of aluminum cleaning refreshment program or something beautiful along the lines. Or better yet, just, um, just buy a case. And that is it for today's episode of Technoid. Now guys, again, today's episode, I sounded really, really negative and down. And again, guys, I don't like to be that way, but honestly, the hype for this episode kind of went out the door after the first episode of, you know, the OnePlus leaks. So I apologize, guys. But again, I will bring the hype tomorrow. I hope to see you all tomorrow on tomorrow's episode. Have a great rest of your day. Like, comment, subscribe, share the video out. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, at Technoid12. And all my videos are brought to you by Rogue Energy. Check out Rogue Energy, link in the description. Thank you for watching and peace.